This is the Edexcel IAL Mathematics Pure Math 2 uh, from January, January 2023. Uh, looking at question nine in this video, which deals with calculus area under the curve or area under a line. Let's take a look. Quite a lot of information given, given here. I just wants that you use the your own working. Obviously, you can't just stick this in the calculator. Okay, so that doesn't work. We have a curve C with this equation. Here's our curve. And we have a line L with this equation. So it's a line parallel to the x axis. And the curve intersects the x, the y axis at D. All right, number A, write down the coordinates of D. So the D is the y-intercept of the curve. So anytime you have a y-intercept, you let x equal to zero. Uh, to or we could just do it by inspection. It'll just be the, the five here, but to show the working. Number nine, A. Um, so we want to find zero. Oh, excuse me. We're letting x equal to zero for y intercepts. So we have f of zero of our curve is zero squared plus four times zero plus five. So therefore, it's going to be five. So zero squared is zero. Four times zero is zero. Uh, then our, therefore we have zero, five as our D. Okay, number B, find the X coordinates of E and the X coordinates of F. So E and F are the X intercepts. So those are the X intercepts of the curve. We've done the Y intercept of the curve. Excuse me, those are not the x-intercepts at all. Those are the lines of interception between the line. Those are the points of interception between the line L and the curve. Okay. X is down there. So let's see, um, points of intersection, you let the curve equal to the line. So we have the line as... Um, y equal to two, which was given. And then we have the curve C as x squared minus four x plus five, which was given. And we can just let L equal to C in order to find the points of intersection. So therefore, um, two is gonna be equal to x squared minus four x plus five. And we minus two on both sides. And we end up with x squared minus 4x minus, uh, minus plus 3, plus 3. Zero on the side. Okay. Quickly just factorize. Uh, open up your brackets. So x times x makes x squared. And 3 and 1 are the only factors of 3. And we know that it has to times together to make that, and it has to be plus two or minus together to make the middle term. Okay, so we putting, it'll be minus three, because the third term is positive, both our signs inside the bracket are gonna be the same as each other. Which means they have to e either be both negative or both positive, and they take the sign of the middle term. Because we have two brackets, which are timesing each other equal to zero, one, bracket has to be zero because anything times zero equals zero. So X minus one is equal to zero. X minus three is equal to zero. Uh, therefore, if you plus one on both sides, plus three on both sides, we have X is equal to one or X is equal to three. We're not quite finished. The final step is we need the corresponding Y's on points E and F. Corresponding Y's on point E and F. Um, 
we stub these x values back into one of our equations. But so oh, take a look, our question L, y can only be two. So therefore our corresponding y is it's gonna be two no matter what. Uh, the question asked for, oh, what did the question ask for? I think it only asked for the x's anyway. Find the x coordinates of E and the x coordinate of F. So the question only asked for the x coordinates. So we are actually complete over there. Good. Next question. Okay, more information is given here. Shaded, uh, shown in figure three, which is this. Okay, region R. Region R1 is here. Uh, do that a little better, and R2. Okay, so we have two regions that we have, need the area for, and they give a little information about both. So they say it's bound by C, R1 is bound by C, which is the curve, and the y-axis. So it's between the curve and the y-axis, the green area, and the pinky purple area is between the curve and the segments EF. So EF is from E to F, and DF is from D to F. So those are the, just inside those lines. Given that the area of R1 divided by the area of R2 is equal to K, where K is some sort of constant, use the algebraic information to find the exact value of K. So what is K? Uh, and it wants it in fraction form. Okay, so not just a normal area question, we also have to use this information about K. So this is number nine C. Number nine C. Okay, well, let's start with area R1. Area of R1. Well, any area of a curve is going to be equal to the area from any point A to point B. And um, in this case, we have for R1, it's, uh, oh, hang on, it's between the curve and the x-axis and the y-axis. Ah, no, let me, <laughs> I think I should put this x-axis in a bright yellow color so we can see that we are indeed not doing the area between, that would have been way easier. Okay, no. So we're doing the area between the curve and a line. So whenever we have that, we do the top function minus the bottom function. So it's the area, uh, the integral of the top function minus the bottom one. And for integrals, it's dx. Okay. So what's our top function? Well, the blue curve, the curve is above. So the curve is above here and the line l is below so you always start with the top one area of r1 is from a to b so what is our a our a is our point where it starts which is at x equals to zero and our b is where it goes to which is the x into x of e which is one so we're working out the area of from zero to one of the top curve, uh, which is x squared minus 4x plus 5 minus the bottom one, which is just 2. Okay, and that's integrated for area. Good, that's our area number one. So let's get that into a cleaner actual value. 
first thing I do is I, my, I, I get rid of the fact that there's two functions in there. So I make it into one function. So it'll be x squared minus 4x plus 5 minus 2, where that we need to integrate. So that is the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus 4x minus, uh, plus 3. So that's what we're working with. Number nine C. Uh, from here, we have to first do our um, so we we're trying to do from uh remember zero at the bottom, we do at the bottom here, and we're going two one, so it stays in the same position going from zero to one of the integral of this function. So we have to integrate each term individually. Okay. Remember when you integrate the reverse of the reverse of differentiate. So we have, uh, for example, x to the power of n, you first plus one, so reverse of what we did, uh, if you integrate, you would first times it out. So we, so we say n plus one, and then we divide it by the new n, which would be n plus one. Okay, so x2 plus one is three, x to the power of three, and we divide by three over three. Okay, uh, this was an x1, so minus, 4x1 plus 1 is 2, uh, divide by the new one, divide by 2. And then 3 had an x to the power of 0 uh, visibly there. So minus 3x to the power of 1, divide by 1. Okay, so this is our integral. So we've done, we've dealt with the integrating part, and now we've just got to sub in our 1 and our 0. Right. Just going to for simple uh, simple to make it look a little easier here. Just make three x over one just three x. Okay, and let's take a look. What does this become? So we take the subbing in the one to the whole thing minus subbing in the zero to the whole thing. Okay, so it'll be one to the power of three over three minus four times one to the power of two over two, minus three times one. And all of this is minus uh, the whole thing subbing in a zero. So zero to the power of three over three, minus four times zero to the power of two over two, minus three times zero, which is all just zero. Okay. So one to the power of three is one. One to the power of three is one. So we have one over three. Then, uh, Four times one to the power of two is just four. Four over two is two. Oh, that was negative. And three times one is just three. So we have a third minus two minus three minus zero. A third minus two minus three minus zero is four over three. Okay, third minus two minus three. Yeah. Okay. So this this was the area of R1. Now we need to do R2. Just grab that down. Well, R2 uh, is not the area under a curve at all. <laughs> so uh, we have that's the area of R1 is equal to four over three units squared, because it's area and we, now we want to find R2 and if we look at R2, well, it's the area under this line and it's sandwiched in between there. So all the way down, um, but, So 
steps to be careful. So R2 is just this part. Okay, that's R2. So we can say that R2, the area of R2, is equal to um, the area of the triangle, ODF, minus the area of R1. So that, that's what we're looking at. We want um, the area of the triangle ODF. It's a 90 degrees triangle. So ODF. So let's quickly do that. ODF is here. 90 degrees triangle, half times base times perpendicular height. Okay. And we know that the height is how much it goes up on the Y, which is five units. And we know that the base is how much it goes on the X, which is from one, uh, zero to three. So it's three units. Right. So we can start that in a minute. So R2 equal to the area half times base, which is five. Uh, uh, three times five minus the area of R1, which is four over three. Okay. Uh, something's wrong with this over here. Not just my funny looking three. It's, uh, it's not three units. It's, uh, it's not five units, it's three units because it's from two on the y, y equals two, two y equals five, and the distance is plus three. Okay, so this is a three group. Uh, so let's, we end up with a half times three times three minus four over three, which is 19 over six units squared. This was our two area. Right, last part of the question. It says that given that area of R1 divided by the area of R2 is K, what is K? What is K? So we just do our areas, area of R1 was four over three, and area of R2 was 19 over six, and that will give us our K. So in the end, K equals four over three, big over 19 over six, which equals eight over 19, and that is K. concludes question nine.